before I drink my coffee. So let me just show you this. See, this is the timeline I want to talk about, right? This is a pretty big plan. Here's another example of a timeline. I want to talk about how you read it and show you how in some cases it works in an, you know, an un unintuitive way. Okay. And, um, what do we have more timelines? Well, here you see, we have a timeline, which is like all colored here. So, so how do you read it? How do you make sense out of that? Okay. You see, I, you know, just to show you a different timeline now as Oracle is kind of moving away from flash, you see, it's just a different tool. SQL developer nowadays can generate HTML views as well. And you see, there is also a timeline here. It's the same stuff, but it's just a slightly different looks. Okay. So how do you read this? Okay. So before I take my sip of coffee, then um, here's a tree, right? Trees have leaves, trees have branches, which sort of, you know, combine themselves or they kind of merge at some places and trees have a root, right? Or actually I could, you know, do the same thing, you know, that under the underground you have, uh, what is it, the uh, roots, right, of the tree, right? But I'm not going to complicate it that much. Here's a tree. Here is a tree upside down. And here is a tree of an execution plan also shown in an upside down manner. manner. Here are the leaves. Here are the branches which merge and everything eventually ends up with a root, right? These are the access paths. These are the leaves and sometimes it's a table here as well. These are the access paths which go and access rows. They open blocks, they read rows, they generate rows and then they will feed them through the tree structure, through the branches, you know, more, 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 you know. So I'm not even going to talk about the exact order here because I'm going to talk about the timeline. Again, if you go to my hacking session, then you, I'll talk about the exact order and looping and revisits and so on. But rows essentially start from the leaves. They get filtered, grouped, joined, you know, some rows survive, joined, some don't. And they get fed up the tree all the way to the branch. And this is where the fetch operation, which you normally see here, this is where the fetch operation sends the rows back over the network to the user, right? So execution plan is a tree essentially, right? So that's, that's what I wanted to, uh, wanted to um, say before I drink my coffee. So I'll drink my coffee now and, uh, and uh, then we'll do some hacking. When possible, then the, then the Oracle processing is pipelined in the sense that, uh, you know, we are not gonna, we are not gonna take a million rows from this table and then buffer them up in memory and, and only then process this and this and this. Oracle takes, you know, it depends on your, your array size and uh, there is a feature called row sets in Oracle 12. Uh, it depends on that, that how many rows we take. You know, we can take, let's say a hundred rows and we will send them here. And now this is, uh, maybe this is an index and this is a table. And now we will read a hundred blocks or up to a hundred blocks in a batched operation from this. We, we do some further filtering and now we send, let's say whatever, 50 remaining rows here. This is maybe a group by, or it looks like it's a join, right? Let's, uh, and you know, let's say after, after processing this table, you know, we, we send maybe only five rows uh, survive the join. We send them back here, right? So, and we send all these, you know, rows up here, right? And now the user says, fetch more. We're going to go down, back down here again, we, we, we fetch more rows, right? So um, I do explain this in great detail in the other hacking session, what I mentioned. But basically what I'm saying is Oracle, when possible, it is not blocking. It is like pipeline where rows trickle feed in small batches through the plan and whatever survive will, you know, eventually make their way, you know, to the root here and sent, will be sent back to the user, right? But if I do have an order by here, let's say I have an order by operation, then this is fully blocking in the sense that nothing will get sent back to the user until the full order by is finished. So we actually have to fetch rows from here. You know, we go through the whole plan. You know, we fetch, we fetch rows, we fetch more, we fetch more, we fetch more, we fetch more. 
and nothing gets sent back to the user because we have to order by, we have to order the whole row set. And that's why you use PGA memory. That's why you use temp table space. You have to buffer. You have to buffer up the rows somewhere before you return anything back, right? And I'll, I'll do some hacking uh, to, uh, to, um, to demo this, right? Um, that, you know, hopefully this helps to understand, you know, to see that in which, which parts of the plan are executed when, what is blocking, what is not, and so on, okay? So um, let's, I'm going to log out from this um, machine. So let's leave one connection. Okay. Um, um, simple mon. I'm going to start from something very, very trivial or very simple, really. Okay. So. Um, you know, I'm going to do a select uh, monitoring, you know, it's a serial query. I want monitoring to kick in immediately for demo, pur demo purposes. And I'm going to run four different queries. I'm going to run the sum from this. Then I'm going to union all. I'm going to run a sum from this and so on. All right. It's like four queries. So, um, all right. And let's, let's, let's see what's, uh, what do we get here? I'll close that. Um, so, uh, you see, we are currently uh, in this part. I'll explain where the, these errors come from. But you see, it's a union all. The first part of union all did a full level scan and it was done. And, we, and now a refresh happened, you see. Now the second part of union all kicked in, the third part and the fourth part. You see, we're currently in this part. The query hasn't finished yet. Okay. All right. So, so I hope that this part is, is easy to understand. You know, you, it, unless, um, unless concurrent union all kicks in, which is an Oracle 12 feature, this is a serial query and, you know, it didn't kick in. So, you know, union alls are very linear in a sense. First, we run this query. We will return everything that this row has, this query has to return. You see, this full table scan has returned 185 million rows. And, and it has returned 185 million rows to its parent operation, which is the count star. Or, sorry, it's not a count star. It's a sum quantity, right? Okay, so, so, uh, um, you know, uh, and I'll explain the small differences here in a moment. But once once we are done in, once we are done with the sum operation, we have returned it back to the parent, like the union all operation, and then we go to the next one, right? Now we start the next union all block, and return whatever it has to return. And once it has returned everything it has to return, or everything everything it has, uh, then we go to the next one, right? So, um, and you see from activity, we see that both the table scan takes CPU, but also actually the, you know, the, the max or the sum operation, you know, summing these things together, that also takes CPU. Because, you know, if you have 100, if you have to sum together 100 million values, it is going to take some CPU, right? So it's not only your table scans that take CPU or index access or group by, you know, some of these aggregate operations, uh, you know, also, also do that, right? And um, so I hope this part, this flow down here is in, in general, it's, 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 um, it's uh, understandable. Um, so, so basically in this case, yes. I mean, you could say that knowing how union alls work, it shows you the order of execution. It definitely shows you, you know, something, but you immediately see there are some gotchas because you see, if uh, uh, if you zoom in with your eyes, you see that this sort of aggregate seems to start later. You see, if I go left, 
if I go into the table access, it says that, hey, uh, uh, it looks like the table access full started at the first second of the execution. And duration is 10 seconds here. It means that uh, 10 seconds from the start of this full table scan, we, we reached the end of data. So we closed this row source. So 10 seconds. It took 10 seconds to do the whole thing. But you see, it's, um, you know, when you, when you go here, it took 10 seconds to scan through this table, but it took only seven seconds of CPU to do that. I mean, what's going on? Well, if you go up here, it's th three samples. It took three seconds to do a sum operation. Okay. So the reason why this whole thing took 10 seconds was that we spent seven seconds uh, actually doing the table scan, but we also, this table scan was not active for, for three seconds because for three seconds, the parent was actually, um, you know, uh, was, uh, was doing, uh, uh, you know, summing, right? So it did not, it did not fetch all the rows fast enough. It's almost similar to what we talked about here with fetches, right? When, when the duration is longer than database time, when the duration is much longer than database time, then it means that uh, our query was idle. You know, our session was idle waiting for the next fetch to come in. And it's somewhat similar here that if the duration is 10 seconds, but we only spent seven seconds here actively doing work in this planned line, then it means that for three seconds, um, you know, our parent operations were doing something, right? I could actually, you know, I'll leave this for, for your homework. Instead of some use average square root of quantity, uh, you would likely see that the counting uh, will, uh, will, will, I mean, this part will be probably much bigger than. If you're do not doing a simple sum, but you're doing a, you know, square root and average, your, your divisions are involved and so on, this time will take much longer. So the duration might be 20 seconds and 13 seconds out of that would be done by the computation part, not the data access part, okay? And uh, anyway, so, uh, but what's going on here? I mean, how come, I mean, I mean, we know that the query started in the beginning and why does it show that the, that the query became active somewhere later, okay? So this is the time to go to documentation. Because I had the same questions what you are having right now. I mean, first of all, where do babies come from, right? Or not babies in this case, but where where does this column come from? You know, because Oracle is being being awesome as as you know as as you know in the performance field, everything you see here is must be some sort of a column in a V dollar view somewhere, right? Or in some view, right? So and I did look into this. So. first change time and last change time. It's a date column, so it's not super precise, you know, it's not a timestamp. That's why you sometimes see, you know, some uh, one second granularity errors. It's a date column. And the beginning of this row, I mean, the beginning of this column here and end of this column are first change time and last change time. So we do our SQL plan monitor for every plan line of a monitored execution, for every plan line, it has a row. And for every plan line, we have first change time and last change time, right? So, and then as the execution, monitored execution proceeds or continues, um, SQL monitoring, uh, you know, feature will, will update this. And you see what it means. First time a row was produced by this operation. So you see, I'm not, um, I'm not, uh, I'm not, um, how do you put it? Um, I'm not making this up or in the sense that I, all I had, I figured out where, where does this graphic, you know, where do these columns come from? And then I went to this, I found out that these are the, these are the fields in the V dollar. And the time is first or last time a row was produced by this operation. 
So, this here means is the first, or is supposed to be, I mean, let's, let's see how it works out. Uh, it's, it's supposed to show the first or last time a row was produced by this operation to its parent opera operation, right? It's actually a bit more complicated than that. So let me, let me do some, let's do some more hacking, okay? Let's see if I had a, I'll, I'll get to the joins in a, in a mom, moment, but uh, um, let me, let me do this. So, okay, I'm gonna let, it's this being a hacking session, that's what a happy, hacking session is supposed to be. Not, not slides, but actually hacking. So, uh, monitor, let's do a monitor. Uh, let's do a order status. I know that we don't have too many order statuses, different order statuses, so it shouldn't be that much. Um, and, uh, from all right so okay so set um, maybe I'll just run it one more time so we would, would get the timing as well so just to see what the human wall clock time is from the client side right all right, so it was like 5.7 seconds. And let's see now, um, last execution, you see it's, it shows roughly six seconds uh, as far as the duration goes. It shows six seconds because the duration is uh, based on date columns. So this, uh, that should, uh, it's a, you don't have the granularity as well. So actually that's one more thing to say. Uh, let me think. No, let me see. Uh, let me let me just describe. So, describe with our SQL monitor. Yeah, you see, SQL exec start is a date column, right? And uh, and when uh, and you know these are also what I mentioned. These are uh, or these 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 are all date columns. Right, so that there, when you have short queries, then you may have some granularity issues. You see, database time was 5.7, but duration was six, slightly longer. Uh, but you know, we have a couple of fetches here as well. So maybe some of this extra time is because of fetches. All right, um, so, um, and so this is, um, let me do one more thing. You see, um, I'm, I'll, um, there are more anomalies here, so but uh, I'm just gonna do this. So select. I'm gonna add one more layer to this query. Okay, um, let me put the group by in in the sub query. So uh, no, uh, let's see which way do we wanna do that. Let me let, let me start again. So this was the original query. I'm gonna I'm gonna actually put the original query. Outside, select, or so, so, let's do this, okay. If I run it like this, uh, Oracle would merge this subquery or inline view with the parent query, so it, it would look exactly like it was before, but I'm gonna say uh, no, no merge, okay. So I added one. I just added one more layer into this query, so that instead of a select hash group by and so on, we should have a view column show up here as well. Um, let's see if my hacking will uh, will come out right here. Um, okay. No merge. Okay. You see, thanks to the no merge hint. Yeah, you know, I have one more extra extra layer here. Uh, there is some anomaly about uh, because you know, if if I am, uh, I mean, you you might ask like, how come? Let's see. Let me let me go back to the previous one. So uh, I, now I know how you explain that. So I'm gonna go to the previous execution. 
So one anomaly to be aware of is uh, uh, actually it's a bit more complicated. So one anomaly to be aware of is this. I mean, you know, just like order by, a group by is also a fully blocking operation in the sense that I cannot return any rows from the group by before I have fetched all the rows that come from the child operation. And then I group them and I sum them or count them. And only then when there are no more rows to come from here, end of data in this row source, only then we can re return whatever we have grouped into the parent. And, and so therefore this is kind of wrong. I mean, the timeline seems to show that, that uh, we immediately started returning rows back to the, this parent operation. Well, actually not. I mean, we, we, were, we were doing all the work in here. So uh, that's why I added one more layer in between. So, you know, to, because actually this select statement is kind of, it's a special operator because this is a fetch operator, right? So, and I think there is some anomaly here that if the parent starts uh, doing work, then it just um, sort of reports a similar uh, timeline. Um, I'm not. I'm not saying it right. So let me. Let me. Let you know. This is a hacking session. So that's that's what you get. So let me go to the other one. So let's ignore this anomaly right now, and let's go into something more uh, reliable or more uh, uh, you know better for start. Okay. So you see, the timeline was six seconds, right? So uh, you know, and again, this column is based. It comes from columns which are date data time. So so you see. This may have been much smaller, but because of a the date column only has one second granularity, then it looks like we spent the whole second here, right? But it's it's uh, it's just uh, you know, SQL monitoring was designed for monitoring long running queries that take many seconds or minutes or hours, and you wouldn't have this problem granularity no that noticeable in in long queries, okay? But basically, how you read this is. Uh, um, is um, you know that we did a full level scan, and you see we, we did our full level scan and we produced rows to the hash group by. And you know, and now the question is like, how come, how come the hash group by shows a timeline here? Because we know hash group bys or order bys or you know they they do not return rows, They're, they are fully blocking, you know, they, they, they do not return any rows until they have done the whole fetched and, you know, have done the whole group by. So how come the line here kind of seems to indicate that we are already returning rows back to the parent up here, right? And the answer here is actually that um, even this description is not uh, correct. So this is not the first time a row was produced by this operation. This is the first time uh, uh, the statistics changed in this row source. Okay. If I if I describe the VTOR SQL plan monitor, you see SQL plan monitor monitors you know how many rows were produced by this line, but it also monitors how many IO requests were done. Right, physical IO requests were done. Right, so if any of these metrics change, that's and uh, you know that's when uh, when this uh, kind of uh, that's when the number starts going up. Okay. So. So. Um, so basically, this how you would read that this here is that hey. We started, uh, there seems to be a granularity issue here as well, but basically we started uh, scanning a table. We started doing IOs. That's why this started pretty much in the beginning. Uh, and uh, as we, you know, so because we started doing this IO, the stats, the stats already started incrementing here. That's why the timeline started here, right? And, you know, perhaps this gap is because we, um, uh, because we, um, you know, we, we started, we, we sent rows to the hash group by, and now this hash group by uh, basically, um, you know, like, um, well, I guess it allocated memory around here, right? Um, well, I'm not going to go to that much detail yet. We'll, we'll do more iterations of that. But here it's a bit more visible now, 
that uh, you see when, only when the hash group by was actually done only then we started kind of doing work here because the select statement and view you know they, they were not doing any work they only these steps only sort of delegated work to their child operators under the tree right so and only when they actually finally started getting rows back and sent them back up that's when they were became sort of active in the sense they didn't have anything to do in between okay so i hope this uh, helps a little and now i have a few uh, few um variations so and there but there's one question v dollar sql money uh, you know these views right so uh, so these views are these populated even when enterprise manager is not installed uh, yes this requires a, a tuning pack ash requires diagnostics pack accessing v dollar sql monitoring views you know either with a sql query or gui it requires tuning pack so, uh, uh, so, but yes, these, these are populated even if you don't use Enterprise Manager, right? So this kicks in, you know, and so on, okay? Okay, where do we, okay, so union all. So let me, let me show you union all two, union all two. Okay, so let me see, union all, the first union all, let me actually open them side by side. So, uh, so, uh, ah, SQL monitor, yeah. So that the, the, uh, the first query I ran was, you know, it was a, it's four separate kind of uh, union all branches essentially, and they all return one row. So I get four rows back. But here, before returning anything back, I'm actually gonna you know sum it all together, right? So I'm actually returning one row back with the total grand sum, right, or grand total. So let's see how that looks like, right? So um, I may need to open this up. So this went away, uh, so um, I'll, uh, I'll run them both, both again, so. Okay, so this is the first query. This is the left side here. It's run for like 15 seconds, so I'll have a sip of coffee. It runs longer, apparently, so. I don't have to use Enterprise Manager. If I know the session ID, I can just spool the, you know, monitoring file, uh, monitoring to a file. So it should be, it should be done in a moment, okay? And by the way, while, while I'm running this, um, let me run the second one as well, so. You see, this ran for 41 seconds and returned four rows. And this will now, you know, run probably about, about the same time, but it will return one row. Okay. And you might ask, okay, what is this? What are these arrows? Well, SQL monitoring reports refresh, right? You know, when you, when you, um, when you uh, refresh in the, in the enterprise manager, or, or I just ran it once. And these arrows show up here when when the last change time is within the last i don't know five seconds or whatever so so um, when you refresh the sql monitoring report then the report checks you know basically which execution plan lines have the newest last change time or which ones change the last you know which have the newest dates right and that's where it shows the arrow right and next time it refreshes maybe a different column has a newer last change time that there there has been some activity in that plan line right that's when these arrows will move to a different plan line and right now you see we were in, we, we were done with 
the last change time here had not been incremented anymore. The last change time here was very low. Here it's a bit bigger. Last change time is here is even bigger, but there is an even bigger last change time. You see that way, right? That's why we see an arrow here, right? Okay. And this guy was also, you know, but it's, it's, it's see, uh, the, uh, it's already has finished. So there's a bit of a gap here. So there is no arrow here because there are, there are, there is this row source and these with a bigger last change time, right? That's, that's how the arrows move around. Okay. All right. And now, um, now my other union all finished as well, roughly the same time. Um, I run SQL monitoring again. Let's see if there's anything different here. Um, I think it's, you know, I, I think it's this one is actually pretty much the same. Uh, so this, this union alls are not shown as started because there was no activity here until uh, this group I finished and actually sent one row back, at least one row back. So that's when, when we, when, uh, when we, um, when this rows are started. And actually here, we know that the group by again, this guy is not returning any rows until the end of that group by. But uh, you see, this timeline column is not sophisticated enough because the timeline column is based on only, you know, uh, where does the timeline start and where does it, does it end for this, uh, this uh, line, right? So it's not sophisticated enough to show gaps. You know, it, 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 it's not sophisticated enough to show gaps in the sense that, that uh, you know, we got, we got one row from here and then we actually, this line was idle pretty much because, you know, it, nothing was returned to it. We were waiting for this group by to finish. But then we got one row back from here, right? And then it was idle again. So maybe from Ash or something you could see, but um, but it is, that's that's how, how it works, right? And so the second execution, so the second execution just added this, you know, I'm actually aggregating this results of this uh, union alls. So we just have one more line here. So actually it's not that different here. Um, so I'll just move on from that. And um, I have a union 03 as well. You see union 03 is different. Now I'm doing the same thing. I'm, I'm adding together all, this, all the quantities, but the sub queries, um, you see, in here, in the previous queries, I actually aggregated down here, but here I'm returning all the rows or of this column, you know, and all the rows back to this query block. And this is the guy who's doing the aggregating, right? So I'm not pushing down or pre-aggregating anything in the union all. Okay. So let's run this as well. Let's see if it shows anything interesting. I'll have some more coffee uh, and uh, we'll wait. <coughs> okay, so uh, while it runs, so um, let's do the SQL man. So we are currently on the second level here. You see, now I don't have any group buys here. We are scanning through the first table. And uh, you see, we are sending immediately something to the union all. So now the union all is in between. Our group by is here, right? But uh, we, we are immediately sending something to union all who sends something to the, its parent who sends it here. And now we are grouping it here. So that's why we see this line. Because previously, you see, the union all wasn't kind of doing anything because all the rows that were sent up here, they kind of blocked. They were, they blocked and uh, they were blocked and they were buffered and, and ag aggregated, you know, in here or, you know, not all rows were buffered, of course, only whatever um, groups we have were left in this aggregation. Right. So I just wanted to show you like a few different examples and, th and these scripts are in my, in my GitHub repository as well. So you can just rerun them yourself. Okay. I have one more script called union all many. Okay. So this, uh, um, you see union all many does seven union olds 
from a view, and this is a complex view, right? This is a complex view, it has many, many tables under it, right? So if I look into, you see it finished. If I look into the execution plan, the last execution plan, you see, it's an, you know, it's an adaptive plan. It has 421 lines, okay? And now let's look into the ex let's look into the SQL monitoring. This is a wrong plan. I ran the SQL monitoring to report the latest query that was monitored. This was my latest union all three. You see, uh, you know, it, it started feeding rows right through the plan to the group by. Um, but my my but this query here. Okay, wherever it is, uh, this query here was not monitored. When a query is magically not monitored, you know, because one of the reasons why if you run this, if you go to Enterprise Manager too late, or if you run this too late, the query may be, this monitoring info may be flushed out. You know, it's not kept around forever. It may be gone by in a few seconds, actually, when the query finishes, right? It shouldn't go away when the query still runs, right? But there is one gotcha, which, you know, some of you probably know. Uh, it's a different topic. When the query is more than 300 lines long, when the, we ha it has more than 300 steps, and that, as it's an adaptive plan, it actually it has more steps under the hood, but you, you just don't see all of them. When the query has more steps like this, then um, actually let me show you the adaptive plan. So uh, SQL ID is this, child is zero, right? So explain by SQL ID adaptive, you know, show me that all plan lines. You see the adaptive plan is 400, the actual physical plan is 491 lines long, but some of the lines are not shown you in, in some cases, you know, because there, these became these pass through lines, which are not actually doing any work. And when it has joined, it's doing in this case. So anyway, when you see a plan that's more than 300 lines, you see there is a parameter SQL mon max plan lines. By default, Oracle only monitors uh, queries which have up to 300 lines. I, I don't know why, why, I mean, you could say that, hey, in order to save memory, but you know, your shared pool is like 20 gigabytes in a big system, then I mean, it's okay to monitor bigger plans, I would say, because they are not kept around for that long anyway, right? Right, SQL um, recycle time and so on. So plans can go away quite quickly after they are finished, right? So anyway, so uh, this is, I, I don't really advocate nowadays using undocumented parameters, but this is one of the parameters that you can use. And um, actually, uh, when you go to, Maria Colgan's presentation. So this uh, this Maria Colgan's uh, article as well. So she works for Oracle, right? And like as a product manager in the SQL world, and then then so on. And you see, she also has mentioned that this can be ch changed. Uh, and you don't use alter system for that. Use alter session. You know, but potentially, or or use a login trigger to set it only for um, you know. Uh, I mean, alter system is fine as well for this. You know, but uh, um, but uh, you know, if you're if you just quickly want to fix this problem, then you don't want to do alter system in production for anything without like thinking and testing. Uh, but you can use alter session, right? So let me run this alter session set. I'm just going to use 500 here just to see. We're slightly below 500. And now I run the same thing again. It was pretty quick. And uh, we run SQL monitoring. Let's see if, if it showed up. You know, because when you're running a big data warehouse, then um, I mean, it's it's kind of inevitable that you'll, you'll have big plans with a thousand lines and so on, okay. And I think I have some sort of a uh, flash problem here. Um, let me try once more.
I, I, I tested this out yesterday. It was obviously, it worked, worked okay back then. Uh, let's see, I, but I used a thousand. It shouldn't make a difference in this case, but uh, uh, so I have a monitor hint in it. I'm just gonna use the text text format. So uh, right now, so I'm not, I don't wanna troubleshoot the flash. So you can use a text, uh, you can use a similar Oracle function. You get a text format plan, right? So SQL monitoring did kick in. You see, for this SQL ID, this is my, for this session, this is the SQL ID, this is the query. And, uh, and now SQL monitoring did kick in, even though my flash has a problem now. I think when I used, um, Hmm. It did work on the command line, but uh, but if I let me if I go to the enterprise manager, like the proper. Let's see if this. Uh, so this is the database express. Poor man's enterprise manager, I guess, uh, or well, it still uses the diagnostic pack and so on, but it's not that poor man's. But you see, it has a problem here as well. But if I go to uh, um, the proper. Read control enterprise manager. Let's see if that does it. And I'm gonna run a, a, a as, as next item. So I'm gonna run a couple of joins as well. So you'll see how that works, and then we'll see if there's anything more advanced and fun. But uh, I'm getting closer to being done with the planned planned stuff. So let's go to the proper enterprise manager performance. Uh, where was the performance home, right? You see, I don't use GUIs that much. I forget, where's the, where's the SQL monitor? Okay, yeah, SQL monitoring, okay. <laughs> so, and this uses the new-ish enterprise manager. It's it's 13.3, it's not 13.4, which has a better GUI, but uh, uh, okay, so it's still nothing here. Maybe it's maybe something is aged out or whatever, but uh, maybe I need to. You run it a couple of times. Okay, so now when I navigate it back here, I, it didn't load it for some reason. I don't know why, but the, if I go into here. That's weird. Uh, none of the GUI, none of the GUI. Uh, okay, okay, it just took time. Okay. Let's see if the, uh, if the poor man's and the, this guy is still loading it. So, but at least the um, proper enterprise manager figured it out. And you see, this is kind of the new GUI that they have. You can also like drag and drop columns around, I think. Nope, apparently not here. But anyway, so the, and you see the timeline is here as well. I'm not sure if the timeline is correct. Anyway, so this anyway, so that that's why I don't always use GUIs because sometimes they are confusing because these timelines are they don't seem to be right. Anyway, so I, I just wanted to talk about this um uh, this uh, um this known issue. Okay, and I, I still use flash and uh, SQL monitoring usually because um, uh, apparently the HTML version is some, has some glitches. Okay, so um, let's go on.